What's up, everybody? Playoff football, just like we all expected. <laughs> the Chicago Bears get a week 18 wild card round trip to New Orleans to play the Saints. I'm Dan Reed of the Chicago Tribune. That's Deion Miller of ABC7 Chicago. I got to be honest with you, Deion. I went back and looked just to confirm this. I did have the Bears finishing 9-7 and seven and getting the seventh seed in the NFC in the Chicago wow. Tribune season preview magazine. So I was all over this from the start. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure that I had them like 11 and five or something crazy because I was so excited for, you know, Mitch 2.0 and Nick Foles. And I was so excited 3.0 with Mitch, whatever. Right. And um, I'm sure that I had them even better than they are. I mean, I had them beating the Packers on Sunday, so I don't know anything I'm talking about. However, um, playoffs is it it's new life it's everybody gets another chance uh nobody's gonna get fired now here we go we it's all peaches and roses i'm i'm kind of uh, i wish they would would have won i mean we, we discussed this a right. bit off air but like right. had they won there'd be such a different vibe to this week now it's kind of right. like it feels like formality like i wouldn't have been upset if matt Nagy said you know what 35 to 16 to the best team in the nfc we have no business being here we're just gonna going to move on. <laughs> Let the Saints have a bye. And honestly, you know, that's the way the season should have ended. Had the Cardinals been able to take care of their business against the Rams on Sunday, the Bears would have finished eight and eight. We talked about it last week. Their season would have been perfectly two season run, yeah, perfectly bookended by these two dispiriting losses to the Packers, you know, two eight and eight seasons back to back the way they were. And you could feel what you talked about, even in the post game zooms with Matt yeah. Nagy and Mitch Trubisky and David Montgomery and Danny Trevathan and Eddie Jackson. There was just the momentum was gone, right? This three-game winning streak, immediately the momentum was gone. And in this measuring stick moment, the Bears showed exactly where they measure up, which is not very good, right? right not very right. bad, but not very good. And certainly inferior to the Packers, who over two years have won 10 more games than the Bears, outscored them this year by 35 points, and, and really just pulled away in the fourth quarter on Sunday. And so now all of a sudden you say, what is this? What is this? This playoff appearance, and, and Dan, no Bears team has ever gone into the playoffs with this many losses or after a season that has caused the city this much anxiety and anguish. Right. And so I think for everyone, it's just sort of like, this is weird. Okay, uh, I guess we'll play the Saints here, but there's not any of that that energy and enthusiasm, although Matt Nagy on Monday seemed uh, determined to try to create it for his players, which as a head coach, he should. He should. And that is how he's been all season. I mean, even during the six game skid, it was like, well, we've got a great vibe. Everybody's in a good place. And I feel like that does start with him even speaking some of that into reality as kind of right. his jam. But I don't feel like I guess what's what's frustrating is that they continue to hang out in this NFL mediocrity that we've talked about for how many yeah. weeks now right. that, that that they are an eight and eight team. That's why we feel this way. They are middle of the road. They're not great. They're not terrible. They're just there. And there, and also ran. That's not what you want to be. You want to be either either collapsing to the point where you know it can only get better, or you want to be achieving to the point where you can maintain something. They're just they're just an also ran. I mean, there, there's no other definition for it. And eight and eight is like the perfect record to just explain that. And now it's going to be eight nine, and everybody's <laughs> going to be on the other side of this playoff game, thinking, okay, well they they salvaged the postseason with Mitch. He had a great attitude when they benched him. So, so do you franchise tag a great attitude? Is that what you do? Like, what what can they do at this point? Well, you certainly don't pay that kind of money for a guy who's fifth year option that you declined and then benched and then played well, but not to yeah. some level where you said, okay, this is the career breakthrough. Let's jump in the time machine to that that point that you just made about how we've been talking about this for a long time. I've got two clips from previous YouTube editions here, Dion where we were talking about exactly where this team stands. The first one from week eight, the second one, I'm um, first one from week five, the second one from week eight, jump in the time machine here. They need to find offensive playmakers. And right now it's Allen Robinson and nobody else. And that's what leads you down that path that we thought that we were going down when the season began, which is follow the eight and eight road, right? Follow eight. the eight and eight road. <laughs> Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, my. Um, no, that is where they're headed. There's no question about that. And that was week five. This is week eight. People don't know what to do with this. They don't know how to handle this. And I know Bears fans from, you know, listening to Sports Talk Radio, from being on social media, they can't take another 10 weeks of this. They can't. Yeah. They're going to lose it. They can't. We can't. <laughs> no one can. 
So I know you were skipping down your block for the month of October saying, follow the eight and eight road, follow the eight and eight road. <laughs> there it was. We knew it two and a half months it. ago that this was coming. We also knew that, that, that this city and this fan base wasn't going to be able to buckle themselves into this roller coaster with the grace that was required to get to the end of this roller coaster without freaking out. And so here we are now with another ride uh, or, or at least a little bit more track left on this roller coaster. Yeah. And, and, and folks, I just, I just don't think they have any idea how to properly enjoy a playoff week. We know how rare it is around here, and yet people don't really seem in the mood to, to, to buckle into the car and say, let's go for it. Well, and, and what's sad about that fact, Dan, is that it's the defense that has given us the most cause for pause at this moment and thought they, they can't stop the Saints with the way the defense is playing now they've become just as mediocre as the team as a whole and the offense has been very very good of late I mean not against the Packers not against a good defense but against you know teams they were supposed to beat they look like they had been gaining that momentum but they're still not good enough for a mediocre defense they're good enough to complement a Super Bowl D and we don't right. have they, they don't have that right now Pardon me for saying we. They don't have that right now. And and so that's where I think that the deflation comes from. It's like, okay, we go to the playoffs, but we can't do anything with with a mediocre team. That, that's that's an incredible point, Dan, because I, this is such a different vibe than was there two years ago when they were preparing yeah. for that 2018 home playoff game against the Eagles at Soldier Field where you had – unarguably the best defense in the NFL, right? Yes. I mean, they were taking yes, the yeah. ball away. They were putting quarterbacks on the ground. They were doing end zone celebrations that were getting their own hashtag, right? The entire season was this defensive showcase that hasn't existed this year. You know, I always bring you numbers. I've got numbers for you, okay? Bring it. We're going to go bring through a, a series of numbers. We've talked about these numbers a number of times. 2018, 36 takeaways, 27 interceptions, 50 sacks. That was the last season under Rick Fangio. Wow. Two seasons under Chuck Pagano, they've averaged. 18 and a half takeaways, which is almost half, wow. 10 interceptions, which is almost a third, and 33 and a half sacks, which is obviously significantly below the production that they had two years ago. In addition to that, Aaron Rodgers, two games this year against the Bears, completed 75.5% of his passes, threw for 451 yards, eight touchdown passes, had a passer rating of 140.0, and was sacked one time, one time. And that tells you everything you need to know about where these Bears stand. They're just not, to your point, a championship caliber defense anymore. They're a pretty good defense. They're a decent yeah. defense. But the way this team is constructed, that doesn't give you license to dream big about anything because you're not the you know the playmaking dynamo you once were as a defense. It's so true. And and they the offense in 18 could rely on the defense to provide something. I mean, like I Eddie Jackson hasn't looked at all like we thought he would after getting paid. We've not seen or heard much from Khalil Mack. Robert Quinn is, is by his own admission, underachieving. Like he knows he's had a frustrating year. And you, you add all that together and it just, it looks like the, what, 11th, 12th ranked defense in the league, if that. I mean, mid middle right. of the road. I don't even know if they're that high. And so that that is, it's like disturbing. And you wonder, because you just mentioned that was the last year under Vic Fangio, like how much is Pagano responsible for what, hasn't happened with this defense that has was championship caliber like no one's going to argue with that and now here they sit with very little confidence and you I mean th this is the one thing about Aaron Rodgers you mentioned those numbers gosh I would love to hate him but he's so much fun to watch right like he's just right. he has such command and he's so smart and he just there's such a confidence about that whole team because they have 12 behind center like it's just what what is that like the Bears are so far from having that kind of quarterback that's the bar. If that's the bar in the division, I mean, they are crawling at this point. Like they are not even arms up. Re they're not even within arm's reach right now. No question. And, and, and Rodgers on Sunday was Rodgers again. Yeah. Two games yeah. against the Bears this season. Two games against the Bears this season. He had six possessions before halftime. All six of them ended with touchdowns. The Bears didn't get a single first half stop against the Packers this season. That tells you everything you need to know about why they are five games back in the division yes. of the Green Bay Packers. The 72-yard touchdown pass to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, where the Bears came with a, a corner blitz from Duke Shelley, and Rodgers, to his credit, knew exactly where he needed to go with the ball, exactly when he needed to let it fly, and down the middle of the field went their fastest receiver against 30-year-old Danny Trevathan, and it was a mismatch of epic proportions, and it ends in the end zone, 
And Matt, Matt LaFleur tells you after the game that there was, there was so much going on before the snap on that play that he, he saw the play clock running down. He was tempted to call timeout just to get things settled. And then he just said, you know what? I'm going to trust Aaron here. And why wouldn't you, right? Why like, wouldn't you? What why a luxury to be Matt LaFleur and just be like, okay, <laughs> he's got right. it. We'll figure right. it out. And the well, next thing you know, it's an end zone celebration. A, a, a thousand percent. And that I, I think has been somewhat of the issue with Mitch this year. You know, like we were talking about when he came back from being benched and things were flowing for the offense, we asked him like, are you speaking up more or are you being listened to more? And I think he never gave them any reason to trust the things he was saying, none. And then he started to, and I think they started listening. And I, I think that was to his benefit over the last couple of weeks that things were a little bit more successful because he was being vocal, but they started to have a little trust in him. That hasn't been there. They haven't yeah. believed he could be that person. And he's shown more of that now. Now, what does that mean for his future? I'm not sure, but he's perhaps because he knows he has nothing to lose is why he's shown more of that now. I, I, I think there's a mental part to that that must be acknowledged in this moment. Well, and, and look, they played well in spurts offensively on Sunday. I mean, you look at the way they went down the field on the opening drive to take a 7 nothing lead, and you said, boy, they controlled the clock. They did everything they needed to do. They kept Rodgers on the sideline, which is a great way to play defense against them, is not let them on the field to begin yeah. with. You're up 7 to nothing. You feel like, okay, you, you can do this for a while and keep yourself around in this game. And the longer you hang around, the more of a chance you have in an upset. But then you get to the end of the night, and I know I tweeted this, the Bears had 30 more plays than the Packers. They gained 40 more yards than the Packers. They had the ball for 11 more minutes than the Packers, and they lost by 19 points. So what does it all mean, right? Well, I mean, it, they were settling for field goals, and the Packers are fine to let them do that because they yeah. know they can score touchdowns. And that's yeah. – that you the Bears can't compete with that. And, and that is what I think is so infuriating is they would be down in the red zone and they couldn't – they couldn't do anything with that. And not to mention with the defense facing that offensive line for the Packers without David Bakhtiari, like it, who is a pro bowler, like he's, he's a solid force in the trenches for them. And he wasn't even there. And still one sack, like they couldn't, right. they couldn't make it hard for him. They can't so, make it hard for Aaron. Back to your points about the defense, because you look at the money that they're paying Khalil Mack mm -hmm. and Robert Quinn, and they get a combined 11 sacks out of those guys this year. I think you and I both would have, you know, conservatively predicted twice that at least. Easily, uh, easily. Both of those guys. Eddie Jackson and Kyle Fuller also making a lot of money. One combined interception between the two of them for the entire season. Akeem Hicks, Akeem Hicks, three and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss this year. So you see these production dips by their best players and you say, man, this is something they have to take a long, hard look at in the off season to figure out just how much work needs to be done there. What page of the troubleshooting guide do you turn to, to figure out what has to happen next? Because you can't have your highly paid stars not producing to the level that they're capable of producing at. And you've got to find answers for why that happened. Now you're going to get some of the answers that, oh, they, we had takeaways in our hands and we just dropped them. There were three interceptions that the Bears dropped on Sunday against Aaron Rodgers. But look, the 2018 defense dropped interceptions too. They still had right. 36 takeaways at the end of the year and 50 sacks. Totally. A really right. good defense overcomes some of the missed plays and makes a bigger one later in the game. This team has not made those big plays defensively. And now if you think that Akeem Hicks is getting older, if you think that Danny Trevathan is at the end of his time here, and you start to see that, whoa, this window maybe isn't as wide open as we thought it was leaving the Bears 100 celebration in June 2019. This is what the middle of the road looks like. I mean, this is what average is. This is what mediocre is. This is what 8-8 eight and eight looks like, smells like, feels like, tastes like. And now, for some reason, you get an opportunity to play a playoff game. As we talked about before, a year ago, 8-8 eight and eight would have been the end of your season. You would have been two games out of that final wild card spot in the NFC and you would have been able to process this season with the same level of disappointment as you process 2019 with, now they've got to start playing those mind games with themselves at least for one week to convince themselves, as Matt Nagy told us on Monday, they've earned this, they belong, they've got a chance to beat the Saints, they'll give it their best swing. If they lose, we're right back to where we thought we were always going to be, except instead of 8-8, eight and eight, we finish at 8-9. I know. Well, you know, I was just thinking as you were talking and going through all of these issues that they have right now, we're talking about a playoff team. Like <laughs> the only world that that makes sense is 2020, right? Like that's yeah. the only world that that makes sense. And so I will go through this game where no one's going to give them a chance to win because of the way that they are put together. And, and we'll watch like this, you know, like again, like what it's just going to be, I, I fear more glaring of what they need to do in the offseason. And perhaps that's a good thing.
I don't know. Remember the when the biggest issue was kicker? Remember that? I do. I do. Those are like the good that. old days. <laughs> By the way, before we get out of here, we have to note that your Cleveland Browns, after an 18-year absence from the playoffs, are returning to the playoffs, which is exciting. But at the same time, they're dealing with a COVID-19 outbreak and their kicker is Cody Parkey. So you talk about bittersweet. The Browns can tell the Bears all about bittersweet. I know. It's true. It's true. But I am I am very excited for them because of the way that they got in. They won. They beat the Steelers. I, I don't care that Roethlisberger didn't play. I don't care that they <laughs> sat a bunch of players. They beat Pittsburgh. They got in on their own accord. They are back in the playoffs. We will see what happens from here. I'm nervous about all of their COVID stuff. But, Dan, listen to this lineup for this Ohio girl. We've got the Bears game, then we've got the Browns game, and then on Monday night is the Buckeyes game. I mean, like, <laughs> as I spoke to a friend, he was like, look, if we were in college, we'd be on a bender this week. I'm like, right. totally. Like, can you imagine? Instead, I'm working. So I will got be sober and I'm well mined. You got my permission to go on whatever bender you need to go on <laughs> this week just to get whatever you need out of your system with some of the way these uh, teams have played over time. I tweeted something on Sunday that uh, I think I was 26 year old and I was working, I was 26 years old and working nights in the old sometimes building at the Red Streak, which I'm sure you don't even know what that is. No. Uh, the last time the Browns played a playoff game, what were you doing in January oh of 2003? <laughs> I am trying so hard to remember even where I lived in Billings, Montana. Okay. I lived in Billings, Montana, and I was watching because I had broken my leg and I was laying in, I couldn't do anything. So I was, I had a broken leg. My dad flew out. We were together. I remember it very vividly, Billings, Montana. Yeah. Hopped up on painkillers probably, um, right? Easily, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I feel like the Buckeyes played for the national title then too, and they won. Was Just that the, that? Was that the Miami game? Was that? It was, was that, 2002. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. So here we are. Uh, postseason football, the Bears are part of it. There's a party here. Everyone's partying at the Miller House. So let's, let's, I guess, enjoy the party. We'll be back next week for the funeral. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Go, Bucks. Go, Bucks. <laughs> <laughs>